Windsor is a vibrant, dynamic community with a wide array of intriguing businesses and interesting people. See what new businesses are coming to town. Hear about restaurants you haven't been to before. Learn the latest tips and tricks of technology. Find out what's happening around town. Get it all here on Windsor Today. Hi, I'm Jane Garibay, Executive Director of the Windsor Chamber of Commerce. And I'm Marty McMahon, President of the Windsor Chamber of Commerce, and welcome to Windsor Today. You know, Jane, uh, Kermit the Frog always said it's not easy to be green. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? Well, that might have been true for him, but we're hoping to help people to make it easy for them to be green. That's right. This episode today is going to be on being green, both at your business and your home. And I've got a fun morning uh, set up for myself here. You do. I'm going to be heading up to ING up near Day Hill Road to look at their new building and how energy efficient it is. And then I'm going to have the pleasure of taking a ride with uh, UTCs uh, and through Connecticut Transit, mm -hmm. their hydrogen fuel cell bus, um, which is going to be the wave of the future. And that bus is going to bring me down to John Wavers' house, where we're going to look at some of the things John's done around his house to become more energy efficient, mm -hmm. including installing a, a, a TED. It's a it's an energy detective, hmm. and it looks at some of the uh, wattage of your what your house is putting off. And uh, so when we're done with that, we're going. To, I'm so excited about having one of these installed that we're going to hop into um, John's hybrid and head up to my house where Rob Hensfelder from Powerline Electric is going to install one at my house. That's really exciting. I understand John saved a lot of money on his bill. Well, I'm hoping to as well. As a matter of fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to chart my progress on the Windsor Chamber website about what my bill was before installing it and what it's going to be over the next wow, six months. Wow, the pressure's on there, Marty. I know, so i got to get the kids in order and make sure we keep those lights off. That'll be great. And I understand that the company that produces the TED was so excited they're going to offer a special to any chamber member because we're going to all be watching you that's right and when we see how much money you and john saved that's right we'll be able to get it for 20 percent off and again it's um i think it's gonna be 20 dollars off jane 20 dollars okay yeah. but you'll be able to see information about that as well on our website okay and then what's paula up to this episode um, Paula is doing a segment uh, for this Windsor Today on recycling and I know she's going to take us up on an excursion to the landfill and she's going to talk about what we should and should not be recycling because we can recycle a lot more than we think we can. That's right. And then also John Wavers is going to be uh, going to the uh, Alchemy Cafe in Harford mm -hmm. and he's going to be looking at um, some of the food we eat. Right. Um, there are huge proponents of locally grown food and it's going to teach us what we should be looking at and what we should be eating and not eating. Um, so that's going to be very interesting um, to do. Great. Well, we hope you enjoy the program. We'll see you back here. Good to see you. Thanks for uh, joining us today. Our pleasure. I'm here with uh, David Lee from Connecticut Transit, and we're going to talk about um, some of the things that are going on, some exciting things that are going on with your organization. And one of them is the bus we're on today. Tell us a little bit about this bus. You are in one of only four uh, hydrogen fuel cell powered buses in the Western Hemisphere. The other three are in California. Uh, this is uh, what we think is the technology of the future. It is a true zero emission bus. The only thing that comes out of the tailpipe is a little distilled water vapor, pure enough to drink. Uh, this is a, a project that's a joint partnership between Connecticut Transit, the Connecticut Department of Transportation, and the United Technologies Power System subsidiary, which is, builds fuel cells here in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. uh, this is an experimental vehicle, but one of these days we hope to have a small fleet and someday this is the technology we think of the future, where you can have a true zero emission vehicle if you can collect hydrogen fuel uh, without using uh, other, other uh, fossil fuels, then it becomes a true, with a well head to tailpipe, a net zero emission type vehicle. Uh, it's, it's the future, but but we're operating it now. This bus is operating every day in, in, in and around Hartford. Yeah, that sounds like good news for Connecticut uh, riders, but as well for our economy with UTC. I mean, if this takes off. We're, we're all dreaming of the day when people think of Hartford, they'll think fuel cells. Okay. And also insurance and Mark Twain. 
That's right. That's right. Now, as far as having a, a efficient bus like this, how about the ridership? Are we getting more folks riding the buses? One of the things we've seen at Connecticut Transit in the last couple of years has been a slow but steady increase in ridership, and we attribute a lot of that to people responding finally to the price of gasoline. Um, not so much the price per gallon, but the first time someone f fills up their tank and they go, oh my God, that just cost me $40, $40 $50 to fill up the gas tank. Uh, maybe there's another way I can get around town. Maybe there's a better way to go to work. And even people who don't need to ride the bus every day, people who need their car sometimes, will begin to say, if I can save a few trips a week and use public exactly. transportation, that's money in my pocket, and it's good for the environment. Well, yeah, I just came out of an interview at ING to talk about how green the company is, and uh, there's hundreds of cars in the parking lot here, so hopefully one day many of these folks will be taking a bus here. Well, we're talking, there, there's a lot of work being done to plan better public transportation to this whole Dayhill Road industrial area. Pop, this, is, this is a whole big downtown employment center that's been built in what was tobacco fields that's right. not all that many years ago. So providing better public transportation to this whole area is a, is a priority. ING uh, employees used to have a lot more bus service when they were in downtown Hartford. And they've been talking to us about how we can provide better, better service for the employees here and throughout the Day Hill Road area. One of the issues is, can we provide better commuter express service to the, this Windsor industrial area and this whole uh, Day Hill Road area? And I think that's, that's something that over the next year, we in the Department of Transportation and Council of Governments will be working on. Great. What other activities does Connecticut Transit have uh, on the philosophy of being green? Well, we, we, we were quoting Kermit the Frog, who used to say it's, it's, it isn't easy to be green. Right. We think it is easy to be green. We've done a lot of things that have made uh, even regular city buses a lot greener than they used to be. The, the city buses that we operate today are 90% more uh, better for the environment. They capture 90% of the uh, what had been the pollutant emissions mm -hmm. than the buses they replaced. So a lot of that is, is new engine technology, electronic controls, uh, meeting the latest EPA engine standards, but we do a couple of other things. One is that we were using ultra-low sulfur fuel uh, long before it became a federal requirement. We use 5% biodiesel, so at least some of the fuel we use in the regular buses is from a domestic source, a uh, renewable resource. We have particulate filters that are being installed on every bus, and when you see black smoke coming out of a truck, uh, what makes the smoke black are little particulate items that come out that are weren't, weren't burned in the combustion mm -hmm. process. A, a, a particulate filter is an expensive piece of equipment, but it captures almost 98% of the particulate emissions. So the result is that any city bus you see in, in the streets of Hartford or Windsor um, is a much greener technology than the buses they replaced that were 14 years old. Right. We have done some things in our facility. We recognize that Connecticut Transit is a major consumer of, mm -hmm. in, of energy and we're also a source of pollutant emissions. So anything we can do to be green helps a little bit. We have a, a solar voltaic array on the roof of the Hartford garage and through the magic of the, this technology it converts sunlight into electricity. We have I'm sorry to say it's now the second largest solar voltaic array in the state of Connecticut. Okay. We were the first for a long time. But it generates electricity every day of the year, even on a cloudy day, uh, where there's a certain amount of electricity that's being produced. And it's done in a totally zero emission way, converting sunlight. We've changed the lighting that we use in the building, and that's one of the things these green offices and green factories are doing, is finding more efficient ways of lighting their, their facility that t uses much less energy. And, um, and we've been recognized by the Clean Air Fund as one of the leaders in the state doing that sort of thing. So Connecticut Transit is trying very hard to be a good neighbor and a good steward of the environment. Excellent. You know, really, our own personal health, the health of the environment, and actually our economic health, these are all important uh, programs. So. Oh, absolutely. Well, I'd like to thank you very much for coming well, over here today. It's glad, our pleasure, happy to do it. Let's take a ride. Okay. All right.
John. How are you doing? Good morning. See ya. Thanks for coming over. This is John Wavers. We're at his house and we're going to discuss a device he had installed called the Energy Detective. And then after he tells me a little bit about it, we're actually going to head over to my house and have uh, one installed at my house. So tell us a little bit about the Energy Detective that you had installed. Oh, okay, Marty. This is it right here. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but it monitors how much energy the whole house is using right now in electricity. Okay. So if you notice, uh, right now it's at 170 for watts. If we shut off a light, it dropped down to 150. So I know that this light uses 20 watts. Wow. Now I can switch modes on it and it, it projects how much my electric bill will cost for the month. Okay. So, um, for example, we're looking at the fish aquarium here. The fish aquarium probably costs us 50 cents a month. To so run it. To run it. Yeah. So you can look around the house and say, well, that light bulb, oh no, that one's using all of our energy. And I'll tell you the weirdest thing, the things that we're using energy, we had no clue about. Such as what? Like right now, all the lights are on in the kitchen. If our television were plugged in right now, we have it on a power strip. Yeah. If it were plugged in right now, it'd be using, and off, it'd be using more than all the lights right now. Because all the internal computers have to be running inside the TVs these days and things like that. Yeah, it's amazing. Now, if you remember, we had one of these installed here about nine months ago. Mm -hmm. It Tracking every month, the electric bill was lower than the previous month, and it was $150. Okay. We saved the cost in three months. Really? We went from $250 a month and last month, our bill was $40. Holy cow. Um, the previous month, it was free. We actually had a credit from the electric company because uh, CLNP offered the Summer Saver Rewards Program. So we got 20% of our whole summer's electric bill debited. Okay. So we, we didn't have to pay electricity the previous month. How would people find out about those types of programs that CLNP have? You know, the best resource is their website. Okay. Um, I'll be talking with them later and there's so many programs. There's another one that I was really impressed with. Once we got the discount on the Summer Saver, they offered a home um, energy audit. Okay. They put a huge door in the front and sucked all the air out of the house, and we walked around and we could see and hear all the leaks. Really? And they, again, it wasn't where we expected them. We had closets that were leaking more than the windows. Really? And now, they, they also, they replaced all of our faucets uh, with energy saving faucets. The aerators. Yeah. Yep. And they, they draw less, but honestly, the pressure's stronger. I like it more. Okay. You know? um, they told us our windows needed replacing. Yeah. Which, you know, th that's expensive. But I found I bought a $10 kit that had enough to plastic all of the windows for the winter. And I tracked it. That, that kit there is probably saving $200 a month. In, in your fuel bill. In our fuel bill. Wow. Um, Putting in a new furnace, there's incentives, a $500 incentive through Connecticut to, and this goes until 2017, I believe, that they take that right off your taxes. Uh, the federal program did just end. Okay. If you put in a, a, a many of the different home renovation things, uh, HVAC, uh, you name it really. Right. Uh, those two years, and I hope that uh, we get it voted back in, but January 1st, 2008, it does, in fact, end. So, um, you know. Sure. Anything else that you've done around the house that you'd like to tell us about today? Well, there were, the insulation was very exciting. We mm -hmm. put it on, I mean, that's exciting. exciting. <laughs> John, I, I worry about you, but you're saving lots of money. Tell us about the insulation. Well, we put insulation in the attic. We put it on the windows. That makes a big, in the, uh, the pipes, that makes yeah. a big difference. And I know you laugh that uh, we unplugged the refrigerator and we used the outside. You know, I've been at houses with three refrigerators. Right. If it does not get above 40 degrees in the winter, that's a great, great resource right there. It's right. free. Yeah. You know. Well, we're going to find out that I have an ungodly electric bill. And yeah. <laughs> uh, so hopefully some of these uh, tips that you're giving us is going to help me and some of our viewers. So, hey, I'd like to thank you very much for having us at your house today. Thank and you. I look forward to your segment with CLNP. Excellent. Thank now you. Now we're off, off to my house to have an energy detective installed. Well, John, that was my first uh, ride in a hybrid car. It was a nice ride and it uh, doesn't feel any different than a regular car. Tell me a little bit about it. Well, it runs just like a regular car. I put gas in it um, and I guess it has batteries, but how would I know? You know what I mean? Right. Um, I do get 60 miles a gallon. 
Wow. Um, it's rated for 61 on regular, 68 on the highway. And uh, there's been days I've gotten 90 miles a gallon or more. Holy cow. So I, I fill up with gas, gas once a month. Once a month. You know, I got to tell you, I drive the family minivan, and, I, and we're probably twice a week right now. So twice a week. Yeah. that is great. Um, what we're going to do here is we're at my house, and we're going to have uh, uh, Evolution Electric is going to install my energy detective, and we'll just see how easy it is to have one of these installed. Cool. Good luck. I, I can't wait to look on the Internet and see how it goes. I know. Yeah, cool. Great. Okay. I'm here with Rob Henselder, the po owner of Powerline Electric, and uh, he's going to be installing our energy detective today. Welcome. Good to see you. And uh, Rob, a job like this, um, you know, it, it says on the instructions, you know, maybe you could do it yourself, maybe you should hire an electrician. You know, what are your thoughts about that? Um, well, anytime you're going into an electrical panel, there's live wires and you can't shut them off. So, uh, you know, I can't tell you legally to go work in a panel. It's a residence, and legally you can do whatever you want to do in a residence, but it, you should just call electric, a licensed electrical contractor. Okay. So Rob can't legally say one way or another. I'm going to say you probably should hire an electrician to do this. A licensed electrician. A licensed yeah. electrician. And, you know, when you talk about um, installing something like this, what would you say the time for an electrician well, to do? this is an easy, a real easy job. I mean, I'll be in and out of here in about 10 minutes at Great. the most. Okay. You're Great. basically just mounting the, the software in the bottom and the amp probes on the top, and you're done. The biggest part of the job is getting here. That's right. So, so basically, it costs you probably most electricians will charge you for just one service call. Yeah, this is a one, this is a service call. We, we get about eighty five dollars for a service call. Okay. So just so you know, the the unit itself costs about one hundred and forty. So you know, altogether, you're 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 spending you know about two hundred and twenty dollars to to put it in and. You know, my understanding from John Waveris, who's already had it in, he's been saving hundreds of dollars uh, by just paying attention to this. So we're yeah, looking forward to it. It's a great to idea. I can't wait to see how you deal with it. I am too. Well, what we're going to do, Rob, is we're actually going to have it on our website. Okay. We have my electric bill for the next six months and so everybody can see how I'm doing. See if you're green or you've got a big carbon footprint. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. <laughs> Marty's carbon footprint. So we're going to let Rob, Rob get to work now, but uh, thanks for coming. Oh, thank you. All right. circuitry in my fuse box. Now all I need to do is take the energy device, the, the TED device, and plug it into the right circuit. And once that's done, what I need to do is I'll be able to go to my electric bill and get my rate, plug that in, plug in the day of the month. And what will happen going forward now is I'll be able to see how much electri electricity I've used, both uh, kilowatts and dollars, for today month to date and it'll project out by the end of the month what my electric bill should be. So my kids and I are going to be on board trying to lower our, our, our incredible uh, electric bill and what we're going to be doing is um, we're going to have a little fun with this. We're going to put my electric bill from last month on the website, the Windsor Chamber website and then every month for the next six months I'm going to be logging in what my electric bill is and we'll see what kind of progress we can make. So uh, I'm looking forward to uh, saving some money. with Ron Faulkner, Vice President of Corporate Real Estate. We're going to talk about ING's green initiatives. How are you doing, Ron? Hi. Good to see you. Good to see you. I know that this is a new building in town uh, here in the Day Hill Corridor. Tell us a little bit about what went into the building. When we designed the building uh, for our new offices in Windsor, we put a lot of emphasis on our green initiatives and energy efficiencies. Uh, the building, as you look from the outside of it, has a terrific amount of glass and that glass is very highly efficient uh, glazing. Uh, as part of the initiatives, a lot of the light was designed to come into the building but leave the glare and solar loads on the outside. Uh, as part of that, we implemented a daylight harvesting system, whereas our internal lights reflect how much light is actually coming through the windows from the natural sun, and then those lights adjust automatically to save on energy consumption. Uh, we also have occupancy sensors throughout the entire building to reduce um, the amount of lights that are on when the space is vacant or offices are vacant or conference rooms. Mm -hmm. We work very closely with Connected Light and Power with the design of these energy efficiency measures and through their analysis they've indicated that we have saved enough power to provide 
energy to 3,300 homes on an annual basis. Oh my goodness. So it's a huge number, huge initiative, and we're very pleased with the efficiency measures that we put in from a lighting and also a mechanical and electrical infrastructure perspective. How many employees are, in, are housed in this building? We have about 2,000 employees and consultants that come here on a daily basis. Okay. So it's, a, it's a, almost a city as you walk around and look at the parking lot and That's right. the number of people that come in and that we feed every day, et cetera. So. And I know um, this may, may not be your expertise, but I know that ING is involved with some of the other corporate uh, tenants up here in Day Hill Road corridor uh, on transportation issues right. as far as you know, using Connecticut Transit and rideshare and uh, some other you know, avenues for getting your employees here. Right, we, ING nationwide, along with our operation here in Windsor, Connecticut, really stresses the importance of mass transit and we provide a subsidy to all employees that use it to help uh, initiate, initiate them to use mass transit versus uh, driving their own cars and uh, burning fossil fuels. All right. Anything else that you wanted to tell us about? Uh, we're very pleased with uh, the outcome of the building. Uh, the employees enjoy the openness of the space and we have developed some internal recycling centers to recycle not only what we uh, generate for waste, but also employees can bring into our oh, building right. that we'll recycle for them. So uh, it's incredible the amount of initiative that the employee has put behind our efforts as a company and to jump on the bandwagon in Great. this important issue. Well, Windsor's very excited about high, having ING here in town, and we're very excited that you're so green. Thanks for having me here today. Thank you. Good Take care. You. Now I'm speaking with Lorna Hamilton, an employee here at ING, who's had experience using the Connecticut Transit system to save fuel rather than drive. How are you doing, Lorna? I'm good. How are you? Good. Good to see you. Nice to see you. I, I'm curious. Tell me about what the experience is like taking the Connecticut Transit bus. It was great. I mean, uh, we got a subsidy from uh, the company, which uh, it was like getting a bonus. And then uh, going to and from work, I had that downtime, so I was actually able to unwind. So I was really nice when I got home, and I was ready for work when I got to work. How did I, you feel the uh, buses were as far as inside and cleanliness and things like that? Everything was fine. Um, I had no problems. Uh, I met a lot of nice people on the bus. I networked a lot, which helps with uh, anything in your life. And um, they were always on time. Uh, I, met, I didn't have very few issues in regards to any getting to where I needed to be. And if I wanted to leave early for work, there was enough buses where I could leave at, from starting at 12 o'clock from any time an hour, you know, after that mm -hmm. until my normal leaving time. So. It was a win-win situation for myself and for my employer. Do you feel you saved a lot of money in fuel costs? Oh, definitely. I was actually spending, um, I, on the bus, I spent $35 a month to take the bus because they subsidize it. I was spending that a week. I'm sure. With the car, plus the wear and tear of my car, plus I was a miserable person by the time I got home or work. Sitting in traffic. Yes. So now you're, you're letting someone else drive for you? Correct. Do some work or read a book or? Definitely. Take a little nap? Yes. Well, uh, uh, with uh, the weather, too, people at work would say, if, if it's ever snowed or anything, they'd say, oh, my God, I have to leave. You know, the traffic's going to be bad. And I'd like, my limo driver is coming to pick me up. I have no problem. And, of course, the buses get to take the HOV lane, too. So many Correct. times they miss a lot of the traffic. Yes, definitely. They always miss the traffic. Well, I appreciate you spending a few moments with us. Actually, I'm going to go out now and get on Connecticut Transit's new uh, fuel-efficient uh, bus. Oh, great. So thank you for uh, having thank us here. You. Take care. You, too. This is Paula Pierce and I'm going to talk about recycling today. Reuse, recycle, and reduce. Those are the three pieces of the puzzle. We've been hearing a lot about them over the last, say, 20 years or so, but what does it really mean? Well, the first piece is reduce. Every person in Connecticut, on average, makes about four pounds of trash every day. Now imagine if you didn't take it out and get it out of your sight, how much trash you'd have built up. It would be a mountain in a month. But all that trash goes somewhere. But how can we reduce what we create for trash? Well, buying durable, long-lasting products that you can use over and over and over again, rather than disposables, that's a great way to reduce trash. Use, say, a, a hand towel rather than paper towels, a ceramic coffee mug rather than paper coffee mugs. Try bringing a ceramic mug to a coffee shop, for instance. I bet they'll let you use it. So reducing is one way that we can all help save the environment. 
and it's one piece of the puzzle. Reuse is the second piece of this puzzle. Every time you can, reuse something. Don't, if you can, uh, instead of using a disposable item you use once, use items that you can reuse at home. And also think about how you can reuse something. If something breaks, a watch or something like that, don't just throw it out and get a new one. It can probably be repaired. Also, you can donate clothes.